What a day guys, GPT-5 dropped and also the Cursor CLI just dropped with GPT-5 enabled. Man, so much cool stuff coming out this week, it's hard to get my head around. Let's go. Finally, GPT-5 is out and it's debuting at number one across LM Arena and other popular benchmarks. But is it any good for coding and building apps? And is it better than my current favorite, Claude 4. In this video, I'm going to compare the two side by side in terms of pricing, benchmarks, and I'm going to run some practical front end design tests to see which performs better in terms of building with AI. So first up, if we take a look at LM Arena, the overview here, we see GPT-5 is ranking number one across most of the categories. And the one we're interested in here is coding. But you can't always take this at face value because lots of the models that are on here are not my preferred one or go-to for coding. Even if you look at Claude Opus or Claude Sonnet, it's much further down the list. It's actually ranked number three in terms of coding, but it's still the one I end up using mostly for software development, particularly front-end development. In reality, there's multiple different factors involved in what makes a good coding model. So if we look more specifically at the web dev arena, we have GPT-5 scoring several points higher than Claude Sonnet here, my current favorite. So you can see a big points difference there. To get a visual representation here, you can see GPT-5 is ranking a good bit higher than its competitors. Now, this is not the huge jump that we saw when we moved from the likes of 3.5 to 4, but this is considerable in terms of the recent progress we've seen in different models. And it's been a really big week for OpenAI because they also released two different open source models that you can run locally on your own machine. So if you want to learn more about those models and how to run them yourself, you can check out this video I released on that yesterday. So one of the biggest differences I'm seeing between OpenAI and Claude is in pricing. And Claude has had a little bit of controversy in the last week or two where they roll back promises on their max plans. So we can see here GPT-5 is being charged at $1.25 per million tokens input and $10 on the output. Claude Sonnet 4 is over double the price at $3 and output at $15 per million tokens. And if we compare it to the Claude Opus 4.1 model, there's a huge difference, $1.25 compared to $15 per million tokens. In terms of how much code we can fit into each model, GPT-5 has 272,000 and Claude has 2,000 tokens. So good bit of a difference there. But I wouldn't necessarily rank context as a huge differentiator. We've seen Gemini 2.5 Pro with a huge context window of 1 million tokens not necessarily perform hugely better because of that context. We even saw an interesting cameo from Cursor CEO Michael Truell who went through a demo and let us know that GPT-5 was now available in Cursor. So let's check it out. So to make sure that you've got GPT-5 available in Cursor, it should be available to everyone now, just go to your Cursor up here and then just check for updates to make sure you're updated and you may need to create a new window. And then over in the models section here, you should see now that GPT-5 is available. So you can see here, you can access it from the model selector. So just to click here and you should see GPT-5. So I ran my test using GPT-5 Max with Max Mode engaged to make sure we were getting the full benefits of the model. And I compared it against Claude Opus 4.1 using Claude Code in the terminal. So in all cases, I just quickly installed Next.js with one command, just npx create next app latest, just to make sure we had a similar base for all our tests. And this is the one shot prompt I gave to design a standard landing page for a app that we build in the Switch Dimension course, which teaches you how to build apps with AI. There's a link to that in the description. Anyway, here's the prompt if you wanna pause and take a look. And here's what we got back from GPT-5. My initial impressions were the model worked quite fast and it was good at tool calling, which is another important consideration. So what we got here in terms of copy and design was a very good framework. Now, in terms of embellishments and gradients and colors, this is very basic, but this is actually a very good starting point 
for a design. It's got all the different sections and areas that I'd like to see, and then I could build upon this. So this is kind of the output that I would kind of like to get but um, it is very linear, it is black and white. So I'm sure with a couple of different prompts, you could grow upon this, but let's compare it to what we got from Claude. Now for the identical prompt using Claude 4.1 Opus in max mode, this is what we got. So I think this looks a whole lot better, to be honest. I know it's got the traditional purple color scheme that all these models seem to output, but this is a better output than what we got from GPT-5 in this case. Now, again, I'm only allowing one shot tests here. There's ways we can improve on these, obviously make better designs, but this is just a one shot test across all models. So the next prompt to cursor was to design a CRM Kanban pipeline. And in one shot, it actually did really well in terms of everything that we needed. You can see we can move these around successfully and there's these little animations and nice drag and drop functionality. So that worked really well from GPT-5. So using exactly the same prompt in Claude code, this is the output that we got. So you can see here it has all the fundamentals. It has the drag and drop functionality. It seems to be working fine, but it had issues with the styling. I actually gave it the benefit of the doubt and gave it two extra prompts to see if it could resolve the issues, but it still left me with these styling problems. So I think GPT-5 wins this one. While we're here in Cursor, it's worth looking at some of the new additions to 1.4. One particularly nice addition is you can see how much of your context window you've used in a particular chat. And now you can see a live representation of your budget usage for the month. Next up, I asked GPT-5 to create an invoice extractor where I could basically see an invoice on the left-hand side that I'd uploaded and it would extract all the details out so I could process them in Xero or QuickBooks or whatever accounting software I wanted to use. And in one shot, we got it completely working. And this is something I've tried before with other versions of models and they were never successful first time round. And here's what we got from Claude. So trying out the Claude version in one shot, let's upload our invoice and we get some various errors. Now again, I gave it two chances to see if it could resolve these issues, but we still ended up in the same place. So these are by no means extensive tests. This is all I could manage in the couple of hours after the live stream. So the general take from me and the market is GPT-5 looks like it's the best in terms of initial benchmarks and tests, but I'm really gonna hold back my final judgment for a couple of days until I've spent a little bit of time pair programming with the model across different use cases. The big difference, however, is in the cost. And of course, the fact that OpenAI have released their own open source models that you can run locally. So all in all, I think it's a really big win for OpenAI this week. And a reminder that most of these providers seem to be now really focusing on software development as a beachhead to fight it out, which is absolutely great for software developers and builders just like us. The other interesting release today is the Cursor CLI. So we'll have seen there's been a lot of popularity around CLI tools. These are tools that you can use in your terminal to use AI agents. One of the most popular being Claude Code. Now I recently covered Claude Code in a video and I'm a big fan of the tool, one of the things I pointed out that gets me about Claude Code is I can only use the Claude models. It's really interesting to see CLIs like Charm, Open Code, and now the Cursor CLI, which is in beta. The big thing here is that it's model agnostic and we can use any model we want, including GPT-5. So you can use the Cursor CLI just like Claude Code in any IDE you want in the terminal. It's still a rough beta, but you can do things like review agent edits, steer it in real time, and of course you can set your own rules, cursor rules, add MCPs, etc. I think this is a good move for cursor because there really is a lot of power in having a CLI. You can use it in any tool that you want, and you can set up lots of different workflows around it. Now, Cursor were kind enough to give me some early access to, to test it out. What I will say is it has a lot of promise, but it is in no way as feature rich as Claude Code at this point in time. So let's see how the team develops it out over the coming weeks. I think one of its biggest pros right now is that it has GPT-5 baked in and ready to go. 
To install it, just go to cursor.com slash CLI and just copy this code here. So I'm just gonna paste in this command here. And then to run it, I just type in cursor agent. And of course you can run this as an SDK just like you would Claude code if you want. And you should be able to run it straight away. For it to work properly, you want to open it within a project. So you'll see an interface that's very similar to other CLI tools. If I type slash, I get a list of my commands. We can select our model. So I'm gonna select GPT-5 here. And if we type slash again, if you wanna move a whole lot faster, just toggle on auto run. So that's very much like the YOLO mode or auto accept mode. We can clear our chat if we want to clear the context window and conversation history. You can drop in an image simply by dragging it in. You can reference things with the at symbol, although it doesn't give you the kind of autocomplete you'd see in Claude yet. And a nice feature is you can actually steer the agent in real time. So you can ask a follow-up question as the agent is processing and it won't wait till it's finished its entire process. It will wait till after its latest tool call or its latest iteration of thinking and then add in your comment or whatever way you want to steer it next. Um, and that's something they've also applied to the cursor agent within the main IDE. Great to see another CLI in the game. It's not as feature rich yet as some of the other ones we've seen, but this has only just been released. And I really do like the fact that it's model agnostic. So let's see how it goes. So if you'd like to check out my video on the open source model I put out yesterday, you can check it out in the description. And you can also check out the Build with AI course where I teach you how to build apps without writing any code at switchdimension.com. We'll see you in the next one.